Hello, so in this video we will be looking at, well, actually I don't even know how to say his name. Shinya Grabenikov. Shinya Grabenikov. Shinya Grabenikov. Shinya Grabenikov. So in this video we'll be breaking down Shinya Grabenikov. The libero on Team France will be looking at his serve receive only. Uh, he's actually, I think, my favorite libero to watch. He's been voted multiple times best libero in the world. Um, and I've found that through emulating his style of play, I've played so much better and have a lot of success. So this is against Italy. First serve. The first thing to notice is his steps right before he, right before the server serves it. Um, I think he changed his pattern of movement since the last time I watched him. He used to be more straightforward, but it seems like he goes to the left, takes a few steps, and then goes to the right. Uh, I'm not sure if this is because of lefty servers. But he comes in heavy on the left, takes a few steps to the right, which I would normally say is not a good idea. But what he does really well is he gets stopped and he's pretty balanced before he makes his move. So he's not moving kind of the side as he's waiting for the serve. He's very, very balanced, gets stopped evenly with both feet. He lands at the same time with both feet and he's ready to make a move in any direction. So this ball, I think the way he passes is very interesting. He likes to lean back a lot and fall back. Um, but what you'll notice is that he's always leaning forward with his upper body. So his legs might be balanced a little bit back and he's going to roll back, but he always keeps his body forward as he's passing this ball. So if you see his weights like pretty much on his heel and on the outside of his foot right here, um, his knee gets out of the way, but he's really, really forward with his shoulders and he keeps his platform very still and very firm even after he's passing. So see his butt's almost on the ground. And his platform is still forward, his head is still down, he's still leaning forward till after when he's getting ready to get up. So he does that same, same kind of hop. This one's a little less balanced, a little less even. You see a lot of his foot right here is a little bit further out. He jumps to the right, serve comes back to the left, catches him a little high. So he's, he's forced to lean back a little bit more with his upper body uh, to give this ball the height to reach where he wants it to reach. So this is what's going to happen. If, if you ever find the ball catching you high, you're going to have to give it a little more oomph, a little bit more power to get it to reach all the way to the net. So the higher the angle is, the, the more power, the more time it's going to take for it to get further to the net. So sometimes you just got to give it a little bit more when you're leaning back like this, which it looks like he did. So he passed his ball pretty high and then fell back. So this is such a signature... Uh, Grabenikov move is he he moves his feet like this so he does a little dance right before which I didn't see him do the last few plays but it's something that I've tried to do and I actually really like when you just kind of hop being loosey-goosey up there really just being relaxed getting yourself in the energy and then hop down right after the server contacts the ball so you notice it's after he contacts the ball. So he's jumping as he's contacting the ball and landing after. It's very important because you don't want to land too early or you'll have time to think about where you're stepping. You don't want to land too late because you won't get there in time. So it's immediately after the server contacts the ball, you're landing on a split step so that you make sure that you're taking the first 
good move. A good move on your first step. You don't want to make any bad moves. So that's why that timing is so important. So here, this ball catches him high again. I'm sure lefty servers are giving him a problem. It's always tough to pass a lefty server. But he gets some nice height on this so that his setter can get to this ball. Knowing that it's it's going to be 10 feet, 11 feet off the net, which is not a terrible pass. It's a good pass if you can, if the setter can get under it. He can set anyone from here. So he's still here. He makes even though it's a right-handed server, he's still making a little bit of that that move to the right before he does his split step. But it's not as much as with the lefty servers. Okay, so here he's forced to drop to a knee. It was like a hybrid float short serve almost. So he takes a, a back step right here and then gets on a knee. But something I think that's really interesting is the way he follows through with this ball. Is he, he really emphasizes facing where he's passing it even though when he contacted the ball he wasn't facing uh, but he does this like scoop to where he wants to pass it you see right here he's following through and he's pointing even though he's leaning back he's really emphasizing after keeping his arms forward and fin making a good finish through uh, and he does this like a scoop this is something that I'll do a lot in beach volleyball but I don't see too many people doing uh, in indoor This is a very aggressive pass. He jumps right in front of the person to his right, even though that's probably not the seam. Seam's probably left right here. He does his nice split and really takes this ball outside of his body. Okay, so that's something that if you want to be a great passer, you have to be comfortable at passing outside of your body. You can't be trying to take everything in your midline. You're going to have way more range outside of your body because if you see here, he's able to pass the ball in any of this range. When it comes right at him, he's he's choked and he has to lean back and fall and really throw this ball high. But here he has so much range to pass the ball in any of these directions if the ball stays a little high or drops. Uh, but what he does a really good job of doing is keeping this left shoulder down. So he keeps his left shoulder down, keeps his chin tucked. And that creates the angle that he needs to get this ball literally a perfect pass. So this is this is his best pass. And it seems like the most difficult one. But it was his best pass because he took this ball outside of his midline. So he had all this range and all this room to adjust. And so here he didn't, this is the first ball that he didn't fall back. You see, he actually fell forward. Um, he would be, uh, if he was leaning back, he'd be landing on his butt. But right now he's not. He's landing his, on his knee and his hands forward. So tendency for a lot of people when they're taking balls outside of their body is to lean back. But when you lean back, you're not able to create that angle forward you got to keep that inside shoulder down and follow through forward and even facing away from the court so it's okay if he finishes facing the end line because that really just means that he's he made a really strong angle so this was good Hitting the tape is never easy, but he took a nice two-step right back and was leaning forward enough to where he was able to take his hand, take it with his hands. He didn't commit too early to anything. He was balanced enough to where he could pop up and adjust to this. Ooh, so this is first bad pass but what he does here is another thing that he likes to do is do these little hops right before which I've tried and I think it works very well I think a little bit better than his like two-step little dance 
Um, but what I would like to have seen him do is not take these steps after because these, these bounce steps that are very even allow him to be even on his, on his drop. But he kind of gives that away when he's taking these, these multiple steps that are uneven. So this is what's going to happen if you are leaning back. You're not going to have as much range. You're not going to be able to adjust as much. So the ball went a little bit to his left. Maybe his knee was in the way. Maybe he wasn't able to move his platform to the left. Um, he shanked that ball. Okay, so this is another float we see. So on floats, I would be more okay with not doing that hop and that split. As you see here, he's more moving, a little bit lighter on his feet. He does a little hop, but it's not as significant as on the jump serves because he knows he's going to have to move his feet even more. So he takes a few steps. He does a really good job of staying low, keeping his shoulders forward. And although he's leaning back, he really emphasizes the push through with his platform and keeps his left shoulder down. And he tries to do a scoop, but it's not as much as the last time. So he does a little break of his platform, which you'll see him do a lot. A lot of coaches won't will tell you that this is not good. And most of the time it's not. You should keep your elbows locked every chance you can get. Unless you are really, really good at it and understanding your angles. Then there are times when it's okay to break your platform. But when if you do break your platform, it would be better for you to break your inside elbow, not your outside one. So what he could have done here to create a better angle was keep this elbow straight and then bend his inside one. That would have created a, a stronger angle, bringing the ball more to the middle of the court. But you see here now he's, his angle is this way and he passes the ball that way. So if he just kept his arm out, he would have gotten around the ball but he bends his angle and allows that to break and go to the left. So here's another game against Italy. Far side over here. This ball curves back to the back towards him. He makes a pretty big lean, and he's forced to just chuck this ball high it's a really really good pass like he fought that off so well right on the net super high right in the three zone but allows the middle to run a back one and it's high enough so everyone can see where the pass is and the setter can get right under that and take that at a really high contact but you see it caught him inside so he didn't have any room to adjust on this ball so what he was forced to do is just to chuck this ball super high So very similar. This one's an even better pass. So you see right here, it's kind of hard to see, but he lifts his shoulder. He lifts his shoulder just a tiny bit. Okay, so this, maybe his right arm was a little bit too firm and, and giving too much on the ball. So if he held that, the ball probably would have gone to the right if he kept this arm strong. What he does is he lifts his shoulder and softens the blow on that left, on that right arm. And that just creates just enough cradle to keep the ball centered. So he has a little bit of trouble with this one because he's leaning back so much. I think that's his bad habit. He's, he's always leaning back. So this ball's a little bit short. And he's really stretching to get under it. Really, really stretching. He does a good job, but you see how his, his knee is almost going backwards. So his hips have to collapse so much, and he's really stretching. Perfect pass.
So this one you'll see his him bend his elbows. Comes right at him. Who's holding straight? But right there, he bends his elbows. Okay, so maybe he's trying to take a little bit off the ball. Um, I think what it probably is is it caught him just a tiny bit high. So he's forced to bring his platform back a little bit. To get the angle that he needs. So this is like a weird float jump serve. The guy spash is probably going out. Um, but he stays calm, keeps his body in front of it, and just lets it hit him. And at this point, he's probably not really trying to pass the ball perfect. He's just trying to keep it in. Um, but he stays facing forward. He didn't, doesn't open up because if he opened up, the ball would have been shanked. So he stays facing forward and just tries to take that. So this one's a this one's a funny one. He he leans to the left. The ball's coming to the left. I guess it it doesn't go as far as he's thinking it's going to. And he does this thing that one of my coaches told me is called the peeing dog. It's when you lift one of your legs to get that angle that you need. So I love doing this. Lifting one of your legs just allows you to open up your hip a little bit easier. Um, so he does exactly this. Opens up his hip. He's very, very off balance, but you see his upper body is so firm, so secure. Um, he does not let the ball break his upper body. So his feet are nimble, moving, do, that, doing what they need to do to get his upper body to the ball, and his upper body stays nice and firm. It's a perfect pass. So here, leaning back, not a great pass. Waits all the way on his heels. Uh, ball hit the tape, so that's understandable. It's always hard to adjust from. So I do not recommend leaning back. I know he's the best libero in the world. And he's, he's doing really well. And most of his passes are, are perfect. But uh, you have to understand that he's he's a master at this. He's a master at creating angles. Like he's been, he's been doing this for a really, really long time. Uh, so just because you see him leaning back and going on his heels is not an excuse for you to do that. But what this does show you is that passing the ball is more important than having good technique. So... It really just matters where you contact the ball because if you contact the ball well and in, in the right spot, it's going to go to the place that you want it to go to. Okay, so do not let good technique compromise good playing or good passing. So you want to have good technique because it's going to help you get good passes, but let, sometimes you're caught off balance. Sometimes you're not in a position that you want to be in. Do not let that affect how you pass that ball still do your best with your upper body and really fight for it to get that good pass. Easy ball, free ball pretty much. He's leaning back again, passes the ball off the net. He really falls through with this one. Gives it a little bit extra, an extra push, falls through. He does this a lot on short balls, which I guess it's fine. He's trying to get his body out of the way instead of sprawling through it. He kind of goes to the left and then and then rolls, which it probably would have been a better pass if he just pushed forward through it. And like he probably would have hurt his elbows or burned them, but I think he would have been able to get under it more and keep this ball straight. So super, super good pass. Um, he's really shrugging his shoulders here. Here's another thing. is It's a slow pass, but he stays low and keeps his shoulders tight. He really, really holds his platform tight 
all the way through. Even those bottom legs look like a disaster. His upper body looks amazing. So this is just him showing, oh, such an easy, such an easy serve. I don't even need to try. She takes one step. This is something my coaches have always yelled at me for, is just taking one step, whatever is necessary. Which I know a lot of coaches will tell you that's not good. You should get both your feet there. Uh, I agree and disagree. I don't think you should necessarily be lazy, but you also want to do <laughs> as little as possible. So the more movement that you add, the more problems you're going to have. So you want to simplify this as much as possible. So here bends his elbows again. So he's just tucking. This ball probably would have got caught him high if he didn't do this. Or maybe it would have gone over the net. So what he's doing when he bends his elbows is he's making his platform a little bit more up. So if he keeps his elbows straight, the angle is going to be more forward. And the ball might go over the net. So I think he does this a little too much because he's leaning back just a little bit, but he doesn't, he does a nice finish after because he holds it just for a second after. All right. So that's what I have for Jania Grabenikov. Uh, I think he is phenomenal player. I think you learn a lot from him. I do not think his technique is the best, but it works really well. But you also need to understand that he's playing against a completely different level than high school or college. So he's doing a little bit different things than, than maybe you should. So take certain aspects from his play that you think can help and try to implement them, but just know that not everything will translate exactly the same. You're probably seeing slower serves, um, maybe not coming from as high of a contact. So it's going to be a little bit different. But play with it. Try different things. Let me know what you find works for you um, and if there's anyone else that you want me to make a video on.